Now other channels have talked about this problem, but I don't think they really covered sort of the, the underlying behavior that is actually happening that causes this, right? So this information is effectively hidden from you until you discover the same uh, pull request. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I just wanted to make this uh, sort of better known. Hey, how's it going? So I've been uh, learning a little bit about how caching works in Next.js 13, specifically with the app directory. And I just wanted to show you some of the, the issues that I've discovered. So I've got a really simple application here. You can see that I have a home page that has a link to a nested uh, page over here. You can see I have nested and then page.tsx. So on the client, that just links to this page, which generates a random number. So if we take a look at the browser, we see that we have the home page. We click on this link, it goes to the nested page, and then it shows us a random number. And if I do a hard refresh on this browser, you can see that it correctly behaves sort of how we expect, which is that we'll get a new random number each time. However, there's a catch. You can see if I don't do a hard refresh and I just keep clicking back and forth between these two guys, the number does not change. Now other channels have talked about this problem, but I don't think they really covered sort of the, the underlying behavior that is actually happening that causes this. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Now, before we go into the underlying root cause of the problem, let me first explain the intuition behind why these options don't fix the problem. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is what Next.js calls, I believe, route segment config. The general idea behind it is that in Next.js 13, uh, with data fetching, there is this concept of dynamic versus static data fetching, right? So well, when we say something is dynamic, it basically says that for every request, you know, it goes back and forth to your server or your database and always gets you a fresh set of that data. Then there's static data fetching, which basically says that the data that you fetch can be cached. So there's moments where that data could be stale. And then uh, you have some options to configure how that caching and revalidating works. And you'll see that you can usually configure this either at the fetch level, which is generally what's recommended. And then there's the, the route segment config, which means that you can uh, configure these at the page level so that every fetch within that page basically will behave in a, in a similar way, right? So, so in here, if we're saying that there's revalidate 60, it's basically gonna trigger a refresh of that data and update the UI accordingly every 60 seconds. And you can see if you set revalidate to zero, that's effectively the equivalent of saying, hey, th this should be dynamically rendered every single time. And effectively, it's saying you should not cache this data. And then there's also the dynamic option, which is kind of similar, where you can say force dynamic, which according to the documentation, this is the equivalent of get server side props in the pages directory. And you can see that setting this option effectively turns your fetches into effectively also having revalidate zero. So you could imagine that if you were doing fetches, this is actually a little bit redundant. But the point I'm trying to say here is that uh, the documentation basically tells us that there's server side caching happening, but there's one missing piece in all of this, which is the client side caching that is also happening. And that's the true underlying cause of the problem. Now there's a little bit of a hint of this in the documentation for navigation. In the documentation, they state that there is some kind of client side caching happening for server components that the new router has an in-memory client-side cache that stores the render result of server components. So that's effectively why we have this problem is because the page was prefetched and now it's stored in a client-side cache. Let me maybe try and draw this to kind of make sense of it. So visually in my head, I kind of think of it sort of like this. So imagine that uh, you go to the URL first and the browser says, hey, I want this page. It goes to the server and then, you know, it tries to generate your page. And then let's imagine that in a more realistic scenario, we have a database, right? So it might go, you might see an interaction like this and then it comes back. And then so all the stuff we talked about earlier with fetch and route segment config for caching, all of that is, is cached over here. So you can imagine that uh, it's being added here. So you might have some data cached over here, but then the page itself, once it gets to the client, there's also caching happening here for the page, right? So there's data, there's data caching happening server side and there's page caching happening client side. Let me try to maybe use a different 
uh, shape here just to kind of differentiate it. So you can imagine that the, the random number that we have, for example, let's, let's say that that's represented by this circle, that could be cache server side, but the page itself, once it kind of goes over here, and that has a copy of the data, right? So imagine that's inside here. The page has that data. This is the page that we keep seeing when we keep going back and forth like this, right? It has a snapshot of that previously fetched number, and that's why we're not able to see a fresh number. But when we do a hard refresh, like if I press the refresh button on the browser, basically it says, hey, don't use this thing, go back to the server and fetch me a completely new one. And that's how we get that back the new number. So I hope that makes sense in explaining sort of what's causing it. Now let's go back to the documentation to see how can we solve this. And this is where I think the problem is currently is the documentation is kind of not helpful. It's not helpful. Um, so if we look back at the documentation for the client side caching of rendered server components, we talk about how you can invalidate the cache you know, using server actions and then there's server validate path, revalidate tag. But again, there's two caches, right? So that I believe from my understanding, that's only invalidating the data that's over here. It's not necessarily invalidating the client cache of that page. Let's keep reading. So there's also this concept of prefetching. So basically every time you have a link component on the page, which we do, right? That's how we're linking between the two different pages. By default, that's gonna trigger a prefetch of that next page that the link links to, right? So if you go back to the home page and let's just refresh this, the moment that this shows up in the screen, this link, the underlying link component is gonna trigger a prefetch of the nested page and that's gonna get us our snapshot of the number and of that whole page. And that's effectively what's rendering this. And that prefetch is what allows Next.js to very quickly do this kind of navigation without having to you know, go all the way back to the server, which does have benefits from a performance perspective, but is a little bit problematic with uh, the data being stale if you need it to be as up to date as possible. All right, so let's keep reading. So uh, if we scroll down a little bit more, there's this concept of a soft and a hard navigation. The gist of it is that a soft navigation basically says that the cache for change segments is reused if it exists and no new requests are made to the server for the data, right? So that's basically what we're saying here is that if we're seeing this page as we navigate to that new page, that's basically a soft navigation. We're seeing whatever was already cached. If it was a hard navigation, it's basically saying that go back to the server, we generate this page and then you know put it back into the client. So that's basically what this is talking about. Now there are conditions here of what determines a soft versus a hard navigation. And this is where the documentation, I think, is a little bit wrong. It says here that on navigation, Next.js will use soft navigation if the route you are navigating to has been prefetched. That's what we just talked about. And either doesn't include dynamic segments or has the same dynamic parameters as the current route. However, this line right here tells me that if I simply turn off prefetching, it should switch to hard navigation, right? And let's give that a shot. But if we take a look at our code, we notice that there's already prefetch false over here. I actually meant to not have this for the for the demo. And then I was gonna add it back at this point, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, we're saying that this link right here already says, hey, don't prefetch. But why is it that it's still doing a soft navigation if we have prefetch false? Right? We effectively want to trigger hard navigation because this is where the, the client side cache is invalidated and the server refetches the data and gets us back you know, a fresh page with a new random number. So what's going on? Now I had to dig into a couple uh, Next.js issues in GitHub to find the answer to this. Uh, so there's actually this uh, GitHub issue on this entire thing from November 2022. So this thing has been known for a while now. So this provides you some of the details that I just talked about in this video. And then they do mention that as of Next.js 13.4, the behavior of the prefetch has completely been changed. And there's this PR that basically explains that here's a completely new rule set for how the prefetching and some of this caching behavior works that is not anywhere else in the documentation. It says that if you have link prefetch undefined, which is the default behavior, 
the router will automatically prefetch. If accessed within 30 seconds, it will use the cache, right? So like when we're clicking back and forth really quickly, you'll see the same thing. If more than 30 seconds has passed, it will, and within five minutes, it will refetch and suspend. After five minutes, it will refetch the full content. So let's test that. Let's get rid of this which is going to bring it back to what is supposed to be the default behavior. So right now, again, we have this behavior where it's, it's doing a soft navigation. It's constantly using uh, the same random number. Let's go back to the home page, hit refresh, and I'm going to hit start here. And then uh, we're going to speed up the video. All right, so time's up. Let's go to the nested page and we should expect a completely different random number than what we had before. So that's effectively what they're talking about here with the default behavior for prefetch. If you re-access the same page within 30 seconds, it will use the uh, soft navigation basically and it'll use that client side cache. If you do it within five minutes, it will do some refetching. If you go beyond five minutes, it's basically going to go do a like a completely full refetch of the entire page. Now, as you can see, this is why removing the prefetch in our test earlier didn't necessarily fix it because even if we set prefetch false, it's still, it's not going to prefetch, but it's also still going to store in the client side cache and reaccess it within 30 seconds. Uh, if you, you know, quickly navigate like we were doing. So that effectively doesn't do anything. If you prefetch true, then that 30 seconds completely goes away and it will reuse the same page within five minutes, right? So it makes that TTL even larger. So this is something that I hope everybody understands. Again, this doesn't seem to be mentioned anywhere in the documentation. And like I mentioned here, the, the rules for soft navigation here says that uh, it will happen if prefetched. So you assume if you turn off prefetching, it will be turned into a the hard navigation, but the, the pull request there says otherwise. If we look at the documentation for the link component, there's really no mention of this either on the, the prefetch prop, right? So this information is effectively hidden from you until you discover the same uh, pull request. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I just wanted to make this uh, sort of better known. Now there is still a problem where and other content creators have talked about this, where they kind of expect that if you have force dynamic here, it'll always do a hard navigation and that's just not clear in the documentation at all. Um, but there is talk of being able to control that 30 seconds and how long exactly that is on a per page level, but it's not, as far as I can tell, that's not completed yet, or I haven't seen a pull request for it, but they do say that we may add another API to control that exactly. Anyways, that's really all I wanted to talk about this video. I just wanted to make this a little bit more known. Hopefully you found that helpful in some way. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you been playing around with Next.js app directory? Have you been frustrated with some of these uh, inconsistencies and, and lack of documentation? i uh, love to know what you think so far. Uh, anyways, that's it for me today. I uh, hope to see you in the next video.